Hi everyone, David here from DavidDumeAudio.com, and in this video, I'll be going over the sound design for the trailer Clash Mutant vs. Pirates. So I had the privilege of working on this game, uh, did some sound design work, some music work, and I also did this trailer. So I want to play it through for you guys, and then we're going to go through uh, uh, each section and kind of go over the sound design, how I created it, and kind of break that down. Uh, before we jump in and actually watch the trailer, though, um, for those who are sound designers and want to learn how to make money online from sound design, I have a free workshop. I'll put it in the description below. But basically, I go through the workshops 20, 30 minutes, and I go through exactly how I make uh, hundreds, of, hundreds of dollars every month uh, online just from my sound design. So if that interests you, uh, just check out the link or you can go to my website, daviddumeaudio.com slash workshop. All right, so let's go through this. Um, if you haven't seen the trailer, I'll play it through and then we'll start and go th uh, through each section one at a time. So here we go. All right, so that is it right there. All right, so like I said, for this video, we're just going to go over the sound design. So I'm not going to go through any of the music that I did for this trailer. Um, I'll probably do another video on that, but for now, I'll just do the sound design. So let's start right at the beginning here. What do we have? So there's not much in terms of sound design for the opening title. It's basically just trailer hits. And then first thing is I have some of the breathing here. I actually didn't do any of this breathing. The developers sent this to me. So that there's not much I can talk about for that. For the blood drop here though, uh, this, if I'm not mistaken, I use this. This is part of, I think this is from uh, Sound Morph uh, from one of their libraries. I think that's from Soundmorph, uh, from one of their libraries. And actually, if you go to Sonus uh, GDC, I think, uh, I'm not sure which year it was from, but they, anyways, they post like free samples, um, free sound design for uh, whoever wants it. They're basically free and you can use it for whatever. And yeah, so this is one of the uh, sounds I got. So it's actually a free sound and I just stuck it in there and I don't think I did much with it. If I check here. Yeah, I just balanced it out the uh, my gain here, but that's about it. Like I didn't add any other plugins or anything. So that's all that that is. Um. Yeah, so that's it for that sound design there. Let's see what else I got a bit further on here. All right, so for this searching sound here, let's see how I created that. So let me just open up the files that I used to create this. Because I have the file names here, so. Let me 
just find them. Sword, sword, sword. Here you go. What's it called? Sword 46. Forty six this one? It's probably this one here. Sword hit sound forty six. Not that one. <laughs> Sword hit forty six. Here we go. All right, so here's the sound that I started off with. And I think all I did for this is I kind of, I just did a fade at the beginning and I might have stretched it even like this. So if we listen to it by itself and maybe I reversed it. Like that. Yeah, I think that's what I did. So I just reversed that sound. So the way I created that sound was just metal, just hitting two like knives together or something like that, metal blades. And yeah, that's basically it. I imported it in, in here, reversed it, and then I, f I added some just a fade just so that it wouldn't uh, you wouldn't get that hit sound. And then I added a reverb in here just to make it sound uh, kind of airy. And the point of this one, of this sound here, was to, so that it could lead into this sound, which is this. And the way I did that was actually exactly the same as this. I just found another sound uh, sample that I had. I had the sound effect of like just me hitting knives and swords and things together like that. Put it in here, uh, cut off the, um, the beginning here, because if not, it'd be a hit, and I didn't want to hit. I just wanted to... A sweep. I put that in there, added the reverb again. It's probably the exact same reverb with the exact same setting, just so that it would blend together. Yeah, so it's just to glue the sound together and make it sound like it's coming from the same source. So that's what that reverb is doing here. And that's how I created that right there. Now, for the sword swings, let's see where that is. That, I actually didn't do too much with that either, because these, these sounds here, they're just, I just took them from my own personal library of, of weapon swings that I created. So just me swinging things in front of my microphone and yeah, just <laughs> adding some effects. Actually, if you guys are curious about how I created these like swoosh sounds, maybe I can make like a video about it and, and like make it from scratch. But uh, yeah, there's not too much to these uh, other than me swinging stuff in front of uh, my microphone and then shift, pitch shifting them. So yeah. And what's cool is here for this third one, I ended up doing a hit, I think. So this lined up really well with the, the downbeat right here. So I added this trailer hit. So it sounds really cool. So it adds an extra punch to that to that scene right there, right when it gets to the top. Right, it's just it's really cool. It sounded it sounded really well. So that's that worked out really well. Instead of just having the three swishes, those three weapon swings, then you also get the hit when it gets to the top there. All right, so now for that other sword sound here, when he catches it, when Blaze catches it, so let's see what I did here. Um, what sound is this? So these are some metal sounds again. So me hitting some weapons, some metal pieces together, and just kind of blending them together. That's what this impact sound is here. Let's see this leather stuff. Let's see what that sounds like without anything on. So this one, Leather Armor Russell, I think this is the same thing. This is from the uh, Sonus.com. Uh, they, they do a GDC giveaway every year. This is, I don't know, again, I don't know what year they this one's from. All I have are three years. I have 2017, 2018, and 2019, and I have all their free sounds from those three years. Anyway, so I think this is from, this is what that is from. Uh, it's just a, a, arm, a leather sound. 
and I was basically I was trying to match the his his gloves. So I wanted something leathery to to match that. So that's what that is right there. And then what I added here were Spectre by Waves Factory. And what I like to do with Spectre from Waves Factory, and, and you'll probably uh, notice in this video, uh, you might see me use this a lot, is I just use the, the middle uh, wave and I just boost it up a bit. Because this is kind of like the frequencies where the human ear uh, hears the most. If you if you boost the bass, then it just becomes really boomy. And then if you boost the highs, then it just feels like the sound is really close to you. But if you if you boost kind of the middle range like this, it just it makes the sound fuller. And it's just the, hum the, the part of the human ear is most comfortable with at least that's what i found i found it really useful whenever i do that so i always boost it around like 3 db or or, or less uh, right at the around that range and it sounds i think it sounds really good so that's what that is so let's listen to that it does make it a bit louder so it's hard to tell exactly what it's doing but yeah it's just adding a bit more frequencies and making the sound a bit fuller and then i just pitch shifted it down uh eight That's what that's doing there. So together. Right, so that's what that's doing there. All right, so let's see the next sound here that I put. This is a weapon swing sound, so let's hit listen to that. All right, so again, I didn't do any altering or any anything to this sound. This is just from directly from my, my own personal uh, sound library that I created, and it's just a swing sound. So together with the other two sounds here. So basically just to add that kind of intensity right before he catches the sword. Um, yeah, it's just the whoosh right before he catches the sword. And then I also had this here. And this is a hit from... So if you guys go to keepforest.com, I think it's .com, but anyways, Keep Forest, the company Keep Forest, they, have, um, they do basically a lot of trailer... Um, sound design and music stuff. So that that is really the focus of the company. Anyways, they have a bunch of like free samples on their website, and this is one of them. And uh, yeah, I, I thought that was really cool. And the reason I use this is because I, I thought it had kind of that um, metallic, uh, crystally kind of sound that that worked. It also had like like crystal blade, and I thought it just matched the the visual very well. So. So it's interesting because it sounds like glass breaking. It's probably what it is. But together, like you kind, you kind of don't hear it. You really hear this up, this metal sound here that I have, this metal impact, and the glass is just kind of a background effect. Anyways, I thought that worked pretty well, so I kept it in there. And that's what this sound is here. And... Yeah, I didn't add too much here. What did I add? Yeah, just reduce the the bass here because it's too much for a, just for a sword sound. And that's it. All right, so let's hear that in context now with everything together. All right, and that last part where he's slashing here. Where is that? Not there. Right here. Where is that? Here we go. This is actually from the games. Or at least this is one of the sounds that I had first created for the game. I don't know if it'll actually end up being in the game, but this is one of the sounds I created for the character. And yeah, so they, they send that to me just to put it in there. So that's what that is. And then, of course, the his grunt or whatever. Yeah. Also, a sound I made for the game. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, I added a bunch of reverb on it just to make it sound more uh, ambient and to fit into the, uh, into, the, uh, into the mix. And I'll unfreeze it here because, again, I was just want to show you guys. If you look, again, same thing here on Spectre, just boosting that middle section. So if I play it without... Yeah. Like it's okay, but with yeah. Yeah. it's just a lot fuller. You get a lot more of that body of the sound. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I always like doing that. I th I think it it just works really well. So just freeze that up again. All 
All right, so let's listen to that again. This is just the swords, the sword sounds. Maybe I'll just like solo them. Where is that? Right here. And I had a hit as well right here. Okay, let's listen. Just the sound effects. Yes. There you go. All right, let's move on to the next one, next section here. So for these cards falling, this is the sound I had here. Let's see what I did with this. Nothing. Okay, cool. And a little spelling mistake here. That's nice. <laughs> there we go. So the way I created this these card sounds is I just took um, like cue cards. Um, yeah, I just took cue cards. I basically shuffled them around the my microphone. And then I also have like uh, on my desk, I just kind of threw the cards or slid them on my desk and recorded that. And that's basically it. I think I might have layered them, but I don't think so. I think that's just a, a, a dry recording that I got and I didn't change any of it. Like I just put it in and I thought it worked decent. Like it, it was, it worked okay. It's not the best. It's a little clippy. Um, right here. I could probably like compress that or something, but it, I mean, it's okay. Maybe remove even a bit of the base. It's a little, a little bassy for, for a, a two cards being thrown. But anyways, that's, that's the idea for this one. So just using cue cards and throwing them around for, for that. So let's keep going. All right, so for the spaceship um, landing here, so it appearing, let's find that and let's go over that one. So for this one, I actually layered quite a few sounds, well, three sounds here. So let's see what they are. Okay, so I didn't do too much for that one. Okay, let's have a listen to this first one here. All right, so this first sound, uh, actually the first two sounds here are from my Magic Sound Pack. So I just kind of dragged, dragged them in here and just layered them. So uh, this one is a, a cast, a spell cast. And yeah, it's just a whoosh. I thought, basically I was looking for sounds that could fit, that, that was kind of a whoosh sound, uh, just to match the, uh, the, the ship appearing. So I wanted kind of a whoosh, something like that. And I was also trying to find a sound that could work on its own. So I thought this sound could work on its own originally. So that's how I came up with that. Uh, I think I didn't stay with it because when I played it in the mix, it just it kind of was kind of muddled and it wasn't enough. And yeah, so that's why I came up with other sounds. So this is the second sound I came up with. And that's the sound that you really hear in the mix. Again, this sound from my, create, my um, magic sound pack. And let's see what I did for this one. So I just removed a bit of the highs because it was quite, oh, not wrong one. <laughs> this one, I didn't do anything. I just balanced it, so negative 12. This one, I removed a bit of the highs because it was a little bright and I really want to make room for this second sound here. So that's what that is. All right, so for this last sound here though, let's have a listen to what it is. Again, this sound is also from the Sonus uh, GDC free pack. So again, Sonus every year they give out free um, samples from from their stores, and this is one of them. It's just a igniting a fire or something like that sound, and it was perfect. I thought it worked really well for like um, seeing a spaceship fly through the air like that. So that's what I put there. So it kind of sounds like a spaceship flying, right? It just sounds like the low rumble and the 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 um, distortion of a spaceship flying. So all together now. And you'll see this sound, it'll come back later in the spaceship sound as well. So let's hear what that sounds like.
right? So um, I don't know if you noticed, but right here, I have that exact same um, fire ignite sound that I used when the ship first appeared way back here. And I used it here as that kind of uh, distortion and, and boomy layer. So this is the layer of air. So it's the layer, like if you look at the spaceship, you can see like the air going around it. That's kind of what I was trying to imitate and, and emulate. It was kind of the air and the pressure and the distortion of, of that that was causing. So. so that's what that is. And if I look here, yeah, look, I boosted the low end. So let's listen to what that sounded, that sounds like without it, so. Right, so it just adds a lot more intensity when I when it, when I put that in. So let's listen again. So what I could have done, and maybe that would have been better, is automate the level of this. So right now it's at seven dB, but as so like as the ship goes, so it starts from here and it gets closer and closer and closer. I probably could have like automated the the dB the level so that it it rise it rises as the spaceship moves and comes closer and closer to earth. So that's something I could have done. I didn't, I didn't think about it during the time, but anyways, it still, it still works. Um, I have a decking here. That's probably for some musical element though. Anyway, so that's one, um, sound here. All right. The next sound was the actual sound of the spaceship. And I wanted something sci-fi. Of course, this is supposed to be like a sci-fi uh, kind of game, futuristic game. Um, yeah. So, Let's see later what this sounds like. So what this sound is, is actually from my vehicle flyby sound pack. And the way I created this actually was with um, uh, Massive, uh, Massive by Native Instruments. I just created a synth patch and had some macros going and that was automa automating a bunch of parameters. And that's how I created this patch. So actually, if you guys want to know how I created um, this kind of synth or sci-fi sound, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll make a video about this if, if you guys are interested or just leave a like on the video and then I'll know. But yeah, that's where this sound came from. So I kind of dropped that in. And this is actually, the, um, as you can see, the engine starting up. So... Uh, what I did is I just used that for it starting up. So that's why it kind of it's rising in pitch and rising in intensity. And also works as the spaceship comes closer and closer to Earth, it, it's rising in, in intensity. And that's how I get that. And then once I'm once I'm in, in this middle section, the ship is kind of idle. So I kind of took away that sound until the ship leaves again. Which I put up here. And that's what that sound is. So all three together now, if we listen. There you go. All right, so now this last section here. Oh, you know what? I did put that sci-fi vehicle sound down here when it was idle. So down here, I actually put the vehicle sound of of, of, of my, the sound design. I put it at the full RPM so that it was a consistent loop. And then once I had that loop going, I just I just put it in here, put in a, a little fade at the beginning and at the end, and that's basically it for here. I don't think I added, yeah, I didn't add anything. No, nothing there. For up here, again, the sci-fi, again, me boosting here. I boosted quite a bit more. I uh, boosted 5 dB instead of just 3, so... But yeah, same idea as before here, so that's that. All right, let's look at the uh, when the spaceship is idle and is about to drop the box here. So I added two uh, other layers to make... Basically, I wanted to bring in um, a different sound to the spaceship. So if you look at the video, if I was just going to keep these sounds here, it sounds okay, but when the camera angle changes, you kind of expect a change in sound. So let's let's have a look. Right, you kind of expect a change in sound, and there is a change because I'm like, I'm um, ducking out certain sounds and then bringing other, like I'm bringing uh, the full RPM sound in here, but it's, it's all the same from the same vehicle sound, right? It's all the same vehicle sound, and then this is all the same fire uh, igniting sound. So there's nothing kind of new when you when, when it, the camera angle changes to here, and when it changes to here, you suddenly feel a lot closer to the ship. So you really need to have a new kind of element or layer to the sound. That's where I brought 
um, these layers in. So let's have a listen to this first one here. There you go. And the way I created, actually I didn't even create this. This is again from the Sonus free pack. But what I did here is I um, automated the pitch uh, with a manipulator so that when the spaceship leaves, it was actually uh, ducking down in pitch. So let's have a listen. Let's have a listen here. So actually you can see here, if you look at the format, it starts at negative 24 and you'll see as the spaceship comes into view, uh, comes into the camera, you'll see the format rise and then when it leaves, it'll come back down. So just have a look here. Right, so that's just me uh, automating the format here, the pitch so that it, it changes as, as the ship comes in and leaves. And I did the exact same thing here for this sound. So let's, uh, again, <laughs> same same technique here. I raised it 2 dB near the middle here just to bring out this sound. So let's have a listen to the sound without anything. So it's a cool, good, it's a good sound, good spaceship sound. What I did is I added, again, manipulator to pitch to shift the sound and spectre. So if I do just spectre here for a sec. Again, it's hard to tell because of the loudness, like it's getting so much louder, you can't tell what is actually changing, but I find it adds just a lot more definition to the main body of the sound. Anyways, then I added a manipulator here. And again, same idea, look at the format here and you'll see how it, it changes as the, as the ship comes in and, and as it leaves. All right, so just as it leaves, not as it came in, but you get the idea. So to the two together, by the way, the track spacer here, this is just for me to make room for, I think it was just for the music and stuff. So it's, um, this is, I was, I was using this to duck uh, certain elements, but um, anyways, it's not, I'm not really, it's not really have to do with the sound design here. Right, so that makes the, the vehicle feel so much closer whenever it's like changing from here to here, right, when it comes in front of us. So uh, let's listen to all of these together now. Right, so there's that sound. And then for the sound of the um, of the uh, the load here just dropping, it is just this impact sound here. And I'll play it for you guys, and I'll tell you a bit about it after. Right, and as you can see, I didn't do any edits or anything to this. And the reason is because this came um, already like this, and this is from... So this sound is actually from Boom Library because they do free giveaways every month. They give away a few a few um, sound effects from their sound packs. And I'm pretty sure this is where I got it from. So Cinematic Metal Impacts, this is from one of their months. Um, they have a they had a freebie. And uh, yeah, it just it worked perfectly well in this in this situation. So I just stuck it in there and I thought it was great. All right, so let's listen to everything together now from, from the beginning of the ship here. Uh, right here. All right, and I actually missed one layer here because I added it a bit later. Later, um, and it was the swoosh of like when the ship lands like this, you can start to see air kind of being thrown everywhere from the ship being so close to the ground, and that's what this here is. So let's listen to that. So the the way I created that, um, actually, I don't even remember how I created that. It's just from my sound pack. Um, yeah, it's just from my magic sound pack. So the, um, I kind of remember how I created it, but I mean, it'd be a long process to explain in this video. But um, yeah, I just kind of put that in there. It's a spell cast and then, yeah. I thought it worked really well just for that landing of the ship. So if I play it together. I 
that. There you go. All right, so now let's move on here to these ambient sounds. So let's just play them. So this was just an ambient sound just to kind of set the mood for the scene here where the door is going to be re uh, open and then the character is revealed. So if I had nothing there, like if these were muted, there'd be no sounds. Right? So this is really just to set the mood for these characters. And where I got these, again, I think these both of these were from uh, Keep Forest. If you go to keepforest.com, uh, again, their free section, they have a free section where they have uh, like free samples of their, of their sound packs that they have and their sound design. And then I just stuck these in here and they were perfect for this, for this scene. All right, let's move on here to the door. So for the door opening, I'll just play it here, and then we'll go and kind of dissect each layer. All right, so the way I created that, well, first of all, before I started creating that, the developers wanted something very kind of, they wanted something futuristic when the door was opening right here. And they wanted something to sound like a, a pfft, or like some, some sort of air release when the door was opening, right? So that's, so that's what I was going for here. So let's see this first layer. I thought that was pretty cool. That sounded kind of future. And actually this is kind of, this is what I look for. If you can see here, future weapons. Again, this from so, uh, the um, Sonus GDC, uh, whatever year it was, 2017, 2018, or 2019, don't remember. But this from their free pack, and there was this uh, future weapon sound. I think this is from Sound Morph, actually. So um, yeah, just, just uh, from Sound Morph. And then again, this exact same strategy here, just putting a 3dB gain right in the middle. And did I pitch it? I must have pitched shift it down. Yeah, pitched it down eight. So if I take those off, let's hear that. So that's the sound. It's cool. It's a bit bright though, so I, I, I wanted to add something. So with the spectrum. Cool. And then with the, the pitch pitch down. Right, I think I just it worked very well for the door. All right, the next layer I had here is this. Again, another thing from GDC, they're free sounds, and it's just a whooshy air sound. Let's see how I created that. So I'll take off all of these. <laughs> see, you can barely hear it without anything on. So if I put something on here, let's put them on one at a time here. So a big change is here. So I added, again, you can see here, if I remove this top one, you can see here again the exact same thing, me boosting the middle layer because I, I like to boost the body of the sound so it's more pleasing to the ear. And then I added this top layer because that adds the brightness. So let's hear it um, just without. So that's great, but I want it to be a lot brighter and to feel a lot closer. So whenever you're you're lifting this kind of the top end, the top end of the frequency, you're going to feel like the sounds are a lot closer. That's, that's what I was going for here. So let's listen to that. Right, so it definitely feels a lot closer when you're doing that. So that's why I did that there. And I cut out some of the lows with the EQ here. Because I think because this sound here was already taking care of the lows. So I didn't want anything to, to be in the way for this whoosh sound. Yeah. So this sound, I didn't want anything to be in the way for the, for the lows. So that's why I cut that out. Of course, I added a bit of reverb to give it, to make it airy and space, spatial. Can't really hear much of a difference, but anyways, I put that in there. And then um, a reverb, a delay, sorry. It kind of makes it sound, um, kind of gives it a coarse effect or a flanger effect or something like that. So anyways, those two together now. So again, so that whole point of this these two sounds is to get that sci-fi sound of the door opening and then the, the air release. So that's what I was going for here. All right, so for the next sound here, again, it kind of goes with this first sound. So if we put it together, 
right? And this sound is again from my Magic Sound Pack. It's just an impact sound. And I thought it was kind of a futuristic sound, so I thought it would work well because I thought, so if you listen to these two sounds, I think they're kind of thin together. Especially, the, it's not so much that they're thin together. It's that this one sound is very transient heavy at the beginning, but then there's nothing that carries through. So then with this magic sound, it kind of makes, it elongates it basically. At least that was my idea, or that's the feel of it. So that's how I created that there. All right, so for the door opening here. Again, this is from Sonus, the GDC free pack. Uh, same technique here, boosting the middle. And that's pretty much it. Didn't change much here. Just putting some fade in, some fade outs. Uh, let's listen to this one. This is again from Keep Force. They have their, again their free samples on their website. And I cut some of the highs to give a low punch. This next sound, same thing from from Keep Force, their free pack. Really low boom and rattling and distortion. And finally, this last sound is a whoosh, which is the main, probably the main body of the sound. So if I put all of these together for the door opening, right? It gives that big feel like they're in a big open space. So I thought that, so I think that works pretty well. Oh, and I also had this little impact up here, which kind of brings, uh, it kind of makes it feel a bit closer. That's, that's what this is doing here. So let's have a listen to all of these together now with the ambient sounds. And that's, that's pretty much it for that. So again, not too much that I did in terms of editing. They're kind of all, um, they're just, I'm, I mean, a few carving out of some, some of the high ends and carving out some of the low ends to make space for other sounds, but it really it's just a bunch of layering together here. So, all right, let's see what else we got here. Um, not much here. I think here I have... All right, so here I think I did a similar uh, sword sound effect to what I had in the beginning. So let's have a listen to it. So I started off with this sound here, which again is the same thing. It's that sword hit. I think I could just copy and paste it down here. Um, I don't even know if I changed anything. I think it's the exact same sound that I had from the beginning, uh, wherever that is up here in the beginning that I showed you guys. So I think it's the exact same sword sound. And then I just added uh, different other sounds to do this to the, the slash. So so if I remove the, the fade in, it sounds like this. Again, so these are just metal hits that I did with knives and stuff. And then I added a reverb, of course, to give it room and make it the same reverb as all of these uh, um, two other ones so that all three of these sounds were kind of uh, glued together and combined together so they sound as one sound effect. So that's what I did there. And of course, <laughs> Spectre, same thing here, just boosting the mids. And then let's see this bottom one. Right, again, same thing, boosting the mids and the same reverb as the other two to gel them together. And again, this is the same, this is just the sound from my, from my personal library of sword swings, so um, yeah. All right, so for this swoosh, this swoosh sound, where is that? Yeah, so if you're wondering where the swoosh came from, again, same thing from my weapon swing library. But what I did is I added a lot of bass here. So if I take off the bass and I take off the reverb, you really lose that sense of space and 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 that sense of booming. I guess the bass, obviously, because I took it off. So let's hear it with it on. Right, so it just adds a bit more intensity. And then of course with the reverb, it just makes it a lot more spatial. A lot more space. So that's how I created that. 
Um, yeah, there you go. And then let's see what else we have here. All right, so for this section here, this is Nash uh, jumping and yelling. So the way I created this, I'm just gonna go one section at a time here. So this first layer, I think most of these are all from the GDC free pack. So um, yeah, let's look at this one. Again, this one, I just put it in there and I did a little fade out, but that's about it. And it's just the gritty sand dirt um, sound. So that's what that's there. Um, what is this? A body dirt fall. So it kind of sounds like her foot feet falling. So that's why I put that there. And if I look at the first, uh, her hands here. So this is her hands falling. Um, what is this? Yeah, so these are just footsteps uh, sound sample and I just stuck it in there. So together with that, that's that. And then uh, I wanted a sliding sound, so I, I wanted rocks or some kind of dirt sliding sound, so that's what this is here. So again, if you look at my inserts here, I actually don't have anything. Like These are just gains just to, for me to balance my sounds, but I didn't put anything here. They're just there as is for these sounds. So let's just play them together just so you get an idea. So I started off by just lining up the, the, the hands and feet. So the hands here when they touch the ground and then the feet when they land. And then I added the sliding of the dirt or sorry, if they're like rocks and, or dirt. And then I wanted a bit more. So that's where this gritty sand thing here. That's what that is. And then I added even more down here just to add the tail of the sound. And actually this, this last sound here, so if I play, it's the exact same sound as this one here. All I did was I copied it and brought it down here. And then I lowered the volume. I probably took a different place in the sample. And then, yeah, that's basically it. I did like that. I uh, probably brought it in and did a fade in and then a fade out like that. And then I kind of stuck it in at the end because I want it to be kind of the continuation of this sound here. So, so if I take it out, it kind of just ends really abruptly, but with this, it kind of really fades it out. So yeah, so this is kind of a, a tip or a trick. If you are, if you're just working with samples that are like, if you're, um, if you, if you don't have a lot of samples to choose from or whatever, like you can just take this sample you're already working with, copy it, and then if you want to like fade it out, just like reduce the volume and then choose a different part of the sample, do a fade in, fade out, and then just, just place it and layer it at the end of, of the sample you're already using. So I use that here. I think I used it somewhere else too, but anyways, that's kind of a little tip if you guys want to use that. So anyways, I thought that worked pretty well. Mm, that's pretty much it. So let's listen to that together. So that's how I created that. Again, just a bunch of layering and and playing around until it it, it and just moving it around and, and choosing the right samples to make them sound good. All right. So for her actual voice, <laughs> this is actually my wife. So if I don't put anything on here, let's listen to that. <laughs> that's her sound right there. Her voice. So then. Of course, let's see what I added here. <laughs> no surprise for Spectre. Just booming, uh, again, just raising the middle here, 4 dB. Let's listen to that. Good, and then I probably, I didn't even do anything with this one, so I'm not sure why that's there. Added some reverb here just to give it space. This is just Valhalla Room. <laughs> yeah, just to give it space, like, like make it sound like it's in a big, big location. <laughs> and then just balancing it with the gain here. So all together, let's play all these sounds. <laughs> so 
So that's her jumping. Now for the actual scream, they actually sent me the in-game sound. So I, I, I can't really deconstruct the layers here, but this is what it is. Let's have a listen. So that's actually part of the game. Uh, I mean, I don't know if they'll actually end up putting it in the game, but that, that's one of the sounds I created for the game. So they kind of just sent me that and I kind of stuck it in there. And this is just basically a bunch of different sounds. You can hear like a, a, a bass a synth or something like that. Of course, my wife yelling and then a bunch of reverbs and maybe even some reverse reverbs. I don't remember. But anyways, yeah, and I think... I think that's it for the sound design parts of this of this um of this trailer. The rest is just like music and trailer hits and stuff like that. So All right, so that's pretty much it. Um why don't we just play through and then maybe you guys can listen to the sound design and see what you can pick out now that you know what's what's in there and then yeah, let's have a let's have a listen. All right, everyone, I think that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you guys have any questions about like any of the sign design that I've done here, if you guys want to see any videos like going more in depth about whatever I'm doing, or if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Again, the workshop is also, the link is in the comments. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.